Alrighty, so just wanted to jump on real quick uh, just to sort of try and help people who might be having a similar problem to what I have been having over the past day or so after getting my brand new Sony A7 Mark IV, uh, which is what is currently recording this video. If you want to see roughly how it looks for video, this is being shot 4K 422 10-bit, just so you, you know, know what it looks like. But you might be having a similar issue if you've tried taking photos on this camera, at least close to its release date, and then putting them into Lightroom. Because this is a new camera and a new release, the ARW files that actually come out of this camera do not open in Lightroom, and the only way to actually view them is through Sony's own Imaging Edge software. Um, I'll pull one up here, and as you can see, Imaging Edge does a pretty terrible job, not gonna lie, um, and I kind of don't understand why Sony doesn't fix this. Realistically, you know, if it's gonna take time for companies like Adobe to put things in place to properly run with your photos, I don't understand why they don't optimize it 100%, you know, so that their own software actually works. As you can see, it loses a lot of detail, the actual editing system isn't very good, and overall it's just a not you know, not a very good experience. Now, a solution that a lot of people will probably go to automatically is using Adobe's DNG converter. And normally this does a fantastic job if you are using, say, an older version of Lightroom that doesn't support, you know, files from newer cameras. And in that sense, what you would do would be to, you know, select the folder, you'd select your a uh, ARW files, you'd go to then uh, output them wherever you wanted to send them to. However, at the moment, if you try and do that, you actually get an error from the NG converter saying that it's an unsupported file. So even trying to convert these new Sony files is not possible to DNG, at least not using uh, Adobe's official software. So another workaround to this problem that I actually ended up finding, I will leave a link in the description to a website. Now this website, I'll just pull it up, is for XN Viewer. Okay, now XM Viewer, I haven't used it too much in the past, don't really know a whole lot about it to be honest, but can say it helped me out in this situation at least. So if you head to that link in the description, what you wanna do is go to this version here, which is the XM Viewer MP, click on download there. Once that loads up, you can scroll down to about the halfway point here, and you can see there is a download link for Windows and for Mac. So whatever operating system you are using, feel free to download it for yours. I just accidentally started downloading the Windows one by accident, even though I am on Mac. I'm just trying to get used to a MacBook Pro, so, you know, force of habit, I'm not quite there yet, as you can probably tell. Okay, and once you open that file up, it will appear like this. Just go ahead and open up XN Viewer MP. Okay, and then what you're gonna wanna do is come up to the top here, go to Tools, come down to Batch Convert, Okay, so once you have opened up the batch converter, what you wanna do is go to add folder. Okay, navigate to wherever you have your raw file saved. So for me, it's in documents, then it's down in photo transfers, then I've got it in the A74 folder. So here is just where I'm doing a bit of a comparison between the A7 III, the A7 IV, and the A7S III. So if that's something you'd be interested in, make sure to subscribe, stay tuned, and drop any questions in the comments that you might have about these or anything that you want answered or compared between them, and I'll be sure to get to that for you. But once you've got that open, you wanna to go to where you've got those photos saved again. So for me, just in this ARW folder, open that, Okay, as you can see, it's gonna give you a bit of a thumbnail preview of all of your images. Then you wanna to go, to go to output. Here, this is where you can actually select where you want them to be sent to. And then in this section here, where it's got the format, it should be set as same as original. What you actually wanna do is come down here to TIFF revision six. Okay, so we're gonna be converting these to a TIFF file instead of a DNG file. So once you've got that selected, just go ahead and click convert. I'm not going to do that at the moment because I've already done it to this folder, so I've already got all of my TIFF files in there. Um, please note that it does mention that it might not be converting it at 100% of the color depth. Uh, I think it is only doing, you know, say an 8-bit color file. I don't know if there's a good way to get around that at the moment, 
but it's the best that we can do as far as I'm aware. I've had a bit of a look around this software to see if there is any other options that I can tweak and change. And to be honest, this seems as good as it's gonna be for now. I can confirm though that the files themselves in Lightroom do look really good, and I will be showing you some of them after this. But go ahead and convert those. Okay, once you've done that, you can jump back into your folders where you've got that saved to, go into wherever you save them to, and as you can see now, we have a preview available for those images that have been converted. As you can see, they've also been converted to a .tiff file. Now, we can jump into Lightroom and import them as normal. So you can see that I've already gone through and imported all of these into Lightroom, and unlike the normal ARW files coming straight out of the camera, we have got previews available, which means we can go in and make edits to these files. Now, jumping into the develop mode, I'm just gonna show you a couple of shots from today when I was out testing the A7 Mark IV and comparing it to the A7 III and S3. Um, again, please keep in mind, these are not fantastic photos. These are just, you know, while I was playing around in the park, having a bit of fun testing it out. Um, and I haven't gone through, you know, all of them or done any extensive editing at all. Just wanted to pull them up and show you those. Starting here, you can see that we have the files available ready to edit. Um, you can also see that we are able to apply colors to them. We are able to make changes and edits to them. Zooming in as well, you can see that we get a lot more information than what you would be getting out of the default Sony Im Imaging Edge software. Um, again, I'll pull up an Imaging Edge photo here and you can see that it honestly does not look very good at all. At least this way in Lightroom, we can have a bit of a play around with our full res images, with our high res images. Um, as you can see here, we've got the resolution, so 4672 by 5840. Um, you know, and really, it, it is actually a nice photo that comes out of it, I'm not gonna lie. So, this was a workaround that I found trying to edit my you know, raw files out of the A7 Mark IV. Hopefully, this video made sense. Hopefully, I didn't just ramble you know, about too much nonsense. I'm not used to doing this style of video, so hopefully you learned something. If you did, please drop a like. Like I said, if you would like to see any you know, comparisons made between the A7 Mark III, A7 Mark IV, and the A7S III, drop a comment, let me know what you'd like to see between them, any questions you have on them, and drop a sub, get ready for that video. Keen to have a lot of content coming up over the next few weeks regarding the A7S 3 and the A7 Mark IV, as well as our normal shenanigans and all that fun stuff. So thank you very much for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.